Hi everyone, it's Jenny with Joey and Jenny's Little Yellow House. You can find us on YouTube and Instagram at Joey143Jenny. You can also find us on Facebook at Joey and Jenny's Little Yellow House. So today I'm outside our little yellow house sitting on the deck that is adjacent to our bedroom and it is absolutely beautiful. Um, a little bit of a breeze. It's supposed to be almost 80 today and um, which is going to be amazing for a spring weekend. Um, today what I thought I would do is bring out the journal that I've been working on. This is the one that I used the uh, painter's tarp. You can also see I use it as a drop cloth. <laughs> it is a drop cloth. So uh, this is as intended and this is something different. Um, yesterday what I did was I put a little bit of lacy stuff um, just some different things to add some texture I haven't done the entire journal yet um, but I did fiddle around with it a little bit and had a lot of fun with it and you know just use even this scrap um, probably came off the hem of a dress or something but I thought it was neat I thought the colors looked good too with this little journal card um i'm sorry if i sniff i i do have seasonal allergies and it's quite nice today with this breeze so i may it may conjure up a sniff or two um so anyways i did add a little bit here and there um again i'm not i'm not completely done i just wanted to fiddle with it a little bit um you know even something this small adds a little bit of texture this is just a just a little piece of fabric that is the hem off of probably a table runner or something and then I just stamped it with some numbers you know so you could add just you know little things here and there this is off of a handkerchief and I just uh, edged this piece with it and so far that's what I've done so today what I wanted to get started so that I have some things to do while I'm not in my studio something that I can um, take along with me is I wanted to get started on a slow stitch for the top uh, so I have I brought this with me outside so that I could measure oh wait I want to just show you see if I can capture this if they come back we have some hawks out back sometimes they come up and they fly so low you think they're gonna get you. <laughs> but they're definitely fun to watch. All right, back to business. So I brought this out just to kind of get a measurement, you know, kind of see how big my canvas, so to speak, is. And then I brought my, my wool mat out. I use this a lot because I like to carry my project on that. So, and then I also brought out my um, cigar box that what I do with this is I load it with things for whatever project I'm working on um, sewing particularly and um, to be um, honest with you what I've done is I have taken this mat and this box with sewing notions even on flights with me um, last year so in 2022 I took it full of basically almost the exact same thing I'm going to show you with the exception of one I'll show you that um, to Alaska on our flight to Alaska also took it to Kathy's um, so when I uh, flew out to California so um, you know check TSA for your most current um, things that you can take but I'll show you what what's in the box that I um, generally take when I'm on a flight uh, first of all we'll go through these here in just a second but these are the pieces that I pulled out to get a good start on the cover um, this blade um, you could take this um, you know as it is current um, the TSA says four inch blade or less well even though these shears these scissors are quite large the blade is you know only two two and a half inches I typically don't take this on the plane with me I don't really need it because I I cut down my uh, fabrics before I go but I do take this one and I do take these little guys too um, and um, I use those along the line um, I take this cute little pin cushion my mom made me super sweet 
Um, I take uh, my my threads are always a mess. I have never organized them, and I don't know I don't know when I will, but I'd love to. Um, but I also take with me. I won't be using all of these now, but I'll take with me depending on the project um, some cards. And what I've done is just made slits and um, you know I wrap whatever the colors are that I think I might be using um, on that project so that while I'm on the trip um, you know I don't have to take a bunch of everything but I do have enough to get me through that project I just thought I'd show you that um, that was in my little travel box here uh, this poor little box has been through it can I get it open has been through it um so i did have to mend it with a doily i, I hinged it with a doily and then i use um, a scrap piece of kathy's um fabric <laughs> to wrap around it like that so anyways that's that's my little travel my little travel i'm gonna keep my shears out my little travel box i'm gonna keep my um pin cushion out and then I do travel with some of these as well just to help um, if necessary. So I might keep a few of those out too. But my box is just going to be right here, just barely out of, out of reach here. Um, there's some lavender thread that was from another project. I might use it. Um, it I think it would be pretty. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so um, I think what I'm going to do is find a scrap in here that is somewhat large to begin on. Um, I should have brought some sheeting or something like that, but I think this is a beautiful fabric. It's off of a vintage towel, and it's absolutely, the texture is so nice, and it's, um, it's so soft. So I think that's probably going to be a really nice size. Now what happens with me and maybe with others is when I slow stitch, it begins to kind of bunch up a little bit. You know, it shrinks in a little bit as you do a little bit of your tufting and stuff like that. So I think afterwards it'll be just the perfect shape. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use this and I'm going to cut it or tear it, get it started here tears nicely because it's just fragile and wonderful so now that I have that I can set this aside because I know that that's going to fit nicely on there and I may even use some of this on the layers um, everybody does everyone does their slow stitching different um, I, I don't even know a lot about the history of slow stitching I know that it was a form of mending at one point I love it because of the layering and I love it because of the collaging sort of speaks so I'm gonna just see if I can come in just a little bit without messing things up too too bad and um, one thing I like is using let me set this aside for just a second and show you some of the things I want to use using all these different pieces scraps um, can really come together and be beautiful so um, I just looked for some of the little scraps that I had um, and thought, oh, they'll be so pretty together. So let me show you some of these. This is actually just a seam of something, but I loved it. What's neat about this is when you put this in a slow stitch, you could um, blanket stitch down here or you could cross stitch down here or do something fancy a daisy stitch or uh, whatever and i may not even be calling those the right stitches but um, this is off of an old curtain i thought was very pretty so that that might be um it's it's a nice large size so i may use quite a bit of it we'll see and then this is a little piece of sheeting Another little piece of um, uh, doily or lace. Oh my gosh, I love this. Isn't that beautiful? I may try to use quite a large piece of that. We'll see. We'll see. I'll put the larger pieces up here. And then there's a piece of linen. Flaxseed maybe, I don't know. And then another piece of lace. Um, this is just a little bit of tea towel. 
it's pretty it has that nice fray this I believe was an upholstery of some sort um, or no 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 I'm sorry they were drapes some vintage drapes isn't that pretty and it was pretty stained up which of course you know I loved it laundered it the stains um, stayed which I was happy about <laughs> um the aging stains and so um, I'll be using that I it's in a weird shape but I used it to make a beautiful winter journal cover and um, I still need to finish that winter journal cover um, and then I pulled some of Kathy Holden's junk journal uh, from her collection Moda collection you can get this on Etsy at some of your um, uh, fabric stores and so I pulled out a few little things that I thought I might incorporate into I don't know if you can see that if it's got a little blurry let's see here we go um, some few things in here um, some of these what I'll do is I'll stitch down and then I'll trim afterwards and then some of them I'll go ahead and trim depending on the stability of it Another thing you can do is you can iron this on with an iron-on stabilizer and uh, that helps seal it. I, um, I love that idea. I'm not really organized enough in my day-to-day -to, -day to do that, but I also like kind of how it frays a little bit around the edges after I do sew it on, so um, I don't know that I'll do that. Um, and then I just cut some butterflies. I may use a butterfly or two. I did cut some of her tickets, uh, so I may use a line of tickets or one ticket, I don't know yet. And then out of her ledger and letters, um, I I did grab this one, cut that one out. And then um, here's a couple of scraps, and I have been known to use very tiny scraps as well. And um, just put a little bit here and a little bit there. So, um, oh, there's a... a woodpecker. I don't know if you can hear it chirping. All right, so let's get those out of the way a little bit and kind of get started. So today what I'm going to do is just composition, or at least in this video, just the comp composition, you know, getting things set up on this. So um, there is my base and um, I know I know that I want to use some of this and one of the things that I work to do is to not cover you know not to cover too much of the background completely especially if it's super fun like this so what I might do is just cut out a piece of this And then we'll see from there where we go. I'm just going around this flower a little bit. Let me see if I can tell. Yeah, that's the right side. Okay, now you can put these down with a little dab of uh, glue. So, um, and I would do a water soluble, so like maybe um, an Elmer's School um, uh, glue stick. Just put a dab and place it. I have done that uh, for lace and stuff like that. And for the most part, most of mine I do with pins. I just I, I just don't mind working with pens. They do get in the way a lot, but uh, I try not to be too fussy about it. Okay, so I think I'm going to put this one here. It does have a little Maybe I should come out a little bit more. Okay. It does have a little tatter here, which is okay. But I think... We'll see. I'm going to lay it there and see what happens. I love this little... I wanted to say it was a handkerchief because it looks like it but look it's bordered on both sides so I think it must have been a little table or a little um, dresser runner which is super sweet 
and I think I'm going to cut it about right here. Okay, set that aside because I might use that. Again, I'm just playing around. I don't even know if this is where it's going to be now. This is that one which is a seam and it has a surging on the back, which is quite interesting, I think. So I might use the surging. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. Anywhere that I really overlap, I may cut that off, but I don't want to cut it just yet until I figure out you know, is this really the direction that I'm going to go? Wow, it is just so beautiful today. I hope you can hear all the beautiful birds. We have so many birds, different types, and Joey feeds so many different varieties. Um, they need fed this weekend. They haven't been fed yet. But boy, oh boy, once they get fed, it's like they haven't eaten all winter. And I know they have. Now you'll definitely hear the train while we're out here. That is for sure. Okay, I want to use a little bit of this. and see if I can get a piece that has quite a bit of... texture on it. This doesn't tear, you know, very well, so cut that a little bit. It does fray once you, you know, cut it, so that's nice. Okay. Now the good thing about um, when you slow stitch is that you can just keep layering and layering. What I'm going to do is decide what is my base layer going to be and then I'm going to determine you know what am I going to put on next after that and that could be you know um, the Kathy the Kathy things could be the next part. Just want to make sure that I connect to the base and don't get too far out of the base. Another thing to consider is the more layers, the more difficult it is to get you know your needle through and you and you know it's a hand stitching thing now you could sew it you know by the machine there's nothing wrong with that but I like the slow stitching part and I like that you know you can take it places with you just wondering if that's the right okay so yeah that's what I'm doing I'm just laying down to see it's always difficult for me on these to see which one is the right one because this one shows so much detail because of the oops sorry of the stitching but this side looks cleaner I think that might be it, it has some black on it. I don't think I want that I love this this came off of a tablecloth I want to say I want that to really show so that might be this may be a second layer thing same with this this could be a second layer um, the reason I'm thinking that is because it's a little bit thicker and instead of um, going in lines I can actually just tack this down so that might be a second layer as well 
definitely the Kathy things are going to be a second layer. I'm just looking for something here that I might want to put. There's a little edge off of a handkerchief. Might be nice there. Hmm. Okay. Not completely thrilled yet. So I just keep moving the stuff around until I like the way that it lays. And then, of course, like I said, I'm going to come back and put another layer on. But while I have it this way, I think this is looking better, more like what I want. I'm going to go ahead and um, pin it down. I'm hoping that if I can be kind of quiet, maybe the deer will come by and I can show you the deer, but I think they're on to me. Turkey were out earlier today. That's a chickadee up in the tree. That little peep was a chickadee. It's wondering, when is Mr. Jojo going to feed us? Uh-oh, here comes a big wind. Ah, hold your fabric. So the next thing I'm going to do when I get this pinned is I'm going to stitch down little stitches so that I can remove my pins. And, you know, they not get in the way of stitching. Okay. Almost done. Just want to make sure all the layers are good. Here comes a train, I think. It might blast us. Yeah, you hear it? It's weird it hasn't sounded. There it goes. <laughs> you may hear it again in a minute because it goes, we have another intersection not too far from here. And it'll blast again in a minute, but it'll be off in the distance. So yeah, that's that's the train. And um, when you're outside, it is quite loud. But you know what, guys? I love it. I just love it. Okay. All right. I think I have it pretty well secured. We'll put one right here since there's three fabrics there. Oopsie. This is another reason why I like to work on a, to work on, on this wool mat is because, you know, you have, you have your little extra pin cushion with you. <laughs> That's a long train. Very heavy. You can hear it in the as it rattles by okay so yeah so that's there you go we got that part done so what I'm gonna do is I'll turn off the camera and I will 
um, do a little bit of stitching and then I'll come back and um, we'll do a little stitching together. So thanks everyone. I appreciate you hanging out with me on this beautiful, glorious day. And I just want you to know we pray blessings over you and that no matter what, I hope you always know that you're so loved. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.